Welcome back to Brie Healthy. Today's show is all about helping the environment in any way that we can. And one big way that we could do this is by reducing our food waste every single day. So today I brought in somebody super special who I used to work with on The Chew. She's an amazing, friendly, super kind, sweet person. She is a culinary producer on TV and she has her own blog called Trash to Table and she created this amazing thing called Food Waste Friday. Please give a warm welcome to the amazing Sarah Saper. Hey, Sarah. Hello. So good to see good you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. So I wanted to just ask you a couple questions. What sparked your interest in cooking? Ooh, that's a great question. I, uh, my, I grew up with a lot of home-cooked food. My dad was super into cooking growing up. And that was sort of our way of bonding. I'd spend a lot of time with him in the kitchen and help him with stuff. And I always loved cooking. And then I, um, when I moved to college, I really missed home cooking and dorm room food just wasn't cutting it. Um, so when I finally got my own place, I'd have people over all the time and cook with them. And so I've always kind of been in the kitchen. I've worked in restaurants my whole life, um, mostly front of house. And then once I started really getting into cooking, I started transitioning into back of house and working in kitchens and um, found myself working in uh, film and TV, but missed the kitchen so much. So I decided to go to culinary school to blend both of those worlds. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we used to work together, so I would always, well, I had a desk in the hallway. <laughs> so she would always walk past and be super nice to me. She was always a friendly face, so I'm so glad to have you here today. Yeah, I'm thrilled. So we actually both got married last year, too. We did. Super exciting. Yes. And now you have your own little bun in the I oven. I do, I do. Congratulations. My body's cooking up something on its own. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy how that works. I know. <laughs> So has this new pregnancy journey shaped the way that you cook? Uh, yes, definitely. I'm now, I mean, I'm still cooking a lot. I'm just doing a lot less um, lengthy recipes. So I'm looking for shorter, quick, easy things that I can do in the kitchen, which is actually um, good for me because it helps me sort of communicate to my audience too, who are often people that have lives and busy jobs and kids and, um, helps me sort of get out of my own um, cooking head and, and start thinking like them and start creating recipes that are more accessible to them. Um, but also I, it, texture has become a big thing with me during pregnancy. So a lot of soft and mushy things are really turning me off these days. <laughs> I can totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> so mostly crunchy and I'm also eat, I'm eating a lot more carbs than I used to, which you know, it is what it is. Nothing wrong with that? No. <laughs> That's so interesting to hear because you don't always think, like you think about the things that change when you eat, but as a chef, it's so interesting to hear the differences and the things you yeah. actually prepare. Yeah. That's yeah. very, very interesting. And you do this super fun thing on your Instagram mm. called Food Waste Friday, yes. which you all need to check out. It is the most creative, innovative oh, way to you. help save the environment every day. So can you tell us a little bit about Food yeah. Waste Friday? Definitely. Um, so every Friday I launch something called Food Waste Friday. It's it's on Instagram stories that will then go into the highlight reel. So it's broken up between photos and videos. Uh, I will develop a recipe based on something that you might throw away in your kitchen. So um, sweet potato peels, uh, veggie scraps, things like that. Uh, and try to provide a recipe for home cooks um, that is accessible to them, easy to them, um, and just show them different tips and different recipes and ways to actually use those items that otherwise you'd be throwing away. It's so incredible that you do that because I, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I throw things away all the time when I didn't get to them or even just the food scraps. That's the, yes. the last thing I think of. Right. I, most of the time it's all the, the carrots that I bought yeah. that I, <laughs> I didn't finish and I have to throw away. But really it's so important. We could be making recipes out of these leftover ingredients, totally. which we are actually going to be doing today. Yeah. So get excited. Well, and there's, <laughs> you, it's an old, it's actually a really old way of cooking, but be, since industrialization and since the boom of the economy in, in first world countries, and because there's so much excess and there's anything that you can think of as available at all times, we have, we've come away from cooking like that. But if you think about it before then, people were always looking for ways to use up the entire ingredient to um, use stale bread. You have histories and cultures of, of recipes that are based on things you would throw away. So it's sort of just getting back to our roots. 
I love that so much. And yeah. I mean, not very many people are doing it. So that's some, a big thing that makes you very, very special. And so was there a turning point that made you feel more aware of your food waste and wanted yeah. to change it? It was a culmination of a few different things. It wasn't like one big event, but um, I started work after culinary school. I started working at Blue Hill with uh, a chef named Dan Barber, who's really the forefront. He was at the forefront of the um, farm to table movement. And now with food waste, he's one of the top chefs that's sort of highlighting a lot of waste and, and thinking of different ways to use products um, that we would usually throw away and different pieces of vegetables and things like that. And so working in his kitchen, I definitely became more aware of what I was using and how um, I was using it. We always, there was, before I threw away anything, I would always have to ask the sous chef or the um, chef de cuisine in the kitchen can I throw this away? Do we? And, and usually the answer was no because there was a use for something else. So it got me thinking about how I use stuff at home. And so naturally, I just started asking myself those questions. Should I be throwing this away? And I just started saving things. And it wasn't until um, Food Waste Friday and Instagram and when I started sharing that stuff that I realized, oh, other people want to know about this too and how to use taking the techniques that I've learned in the restaurants and the different out of box thinking um, that I've learned there and how to apply that to home cooking and share it with the rest of the world. That is so amazing. And so why is reducing food waste so important for the environment? Ooh, that is a very loaded question. <laughs> um, it is so important on several different levels. Um, there, it affects the environment, food production affects the environment in so many different ways. And when we waste so much of it, all of that um, just gets thrown into waste. So for instance, we use 25% of the world's fresh water to produce food that never gets eaten. And if you think about it, the world is, I mean, we don't see it so much in first world countries because we're a rich country who can have access to clean water, but there are so many countries out there um, that are struggling, have been struggling to find fresh water for the last few years, and it's only getting worse, as we know now, as people are starting to come around to climate change. Um, so if, you, if just on a production level, we're wasting 25% of the water that we we have access to. And then uh, there's a lot that happens at the farm level that gets wasted as the food is growing because it's not up to supermarket standards. So a lot of the farmers can't sell a lot of the fruit or the vegetables uh, to the supermarkets because we're used to seeing a banana that's a certain size. And if in uh, that stuff just gets thrown away. Um, and then at the consumer level, we, let's see, I think it's, yes, 94% of the food that Americans, just Americans, throw away goes straight to the landfills, which it's, and if we think, it, it's more about thinking of how we get rid of that food. So composting is obviously a much better, uh, a much better thing for the environment. Um, but a lot of that, uh, what goes to the landfill, a lot cannot be broken down. A head of lettuce, it takes 25 years for a head of lettuce to be broken down in a landfill, which is crazy. Oh it's gosh. crazy. And the, if food waste were a, um, were a country, it would be the third largest participant in uh, gas, greenhouse gas emissions right behind wow. the U.S. and China. So all of that is that it's, it's every single step along the way that we waste food affects the environment in different ways. That's insane. And I actually was reading something recently and you know how we think that, you know, it's biodegradable, just put it in yes. the landfill. I read that there was a group of um, archaeologists or scientists that went into a landfill and dug up a newspaper from 1960. You can read the front page oh clearly. Oh my god! Like, yeah. So things don't really just it decompose doesn't break like down. that. Yeah. No. And in, in, in compost, you have aeration, and it's a whole system of sciences that's set up that you're supposed to turn it. And because all that air is and bacteria, that's what starts breaking it down. In landfills, you just have trash on top of trash on top of trash. No and sunlight. No sunlight, exactly. No aeration. So none of that stuff is breaking. Like the fact that it takes a head of lettuce 25 years to break down is totally insane. Yeah. That's wild. So, well, we can definitely do our part yeah. to help reduce food waste. And yes. Sarah's going to show us some extremely awesome ways to use some stems of kale. I mean, <laughs> Who uses their stems of kale, right? They're a little fibery and, you know, it's not always something that you want to put in your salad. But she's going to show us three different ways to use kale stems. And right here we have one of them. She already cooked these delicious 
kale stem fries for mm -hmm. us. And the recipe, you can find the full recipe at BrieHealthy.com. I'm so excited yeah. to taste those. This is my favorite use of them by far. Mm. It's so addicting. Um, and they're really, I mean, it's honest, all it is is just some rice flour and some oil and kale stems and salt and that's all you really need. It tastes like a kale chip but yeah. in fry form, yeah. which is even better. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is delicious. I'm so glad you like it. For real, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So definitely go ahead and check out that recipe on BrieHealthy.com. But now we're going to show you two more amazing, exciting ways to make kale stems into something entirely different and delicious. So what are we making first, Sarah? We are going to make a kale stem pesto. Uh, which you can use for a multitude of different ways in your pasta. You can use it as a spread on sandwiches, as a dip for crudite. You can even use use it to dip um, your kale stem fries in, which is really fun. Um, and then we're going to make a kale stem vinaigrette, which again you can use in salads. I love it on roasted vegetables. I put it on roasted broccoli and things like that all the time. Or again, it's an awesome dip for your kale stem fries if you really <laughs> just want to go full kale stem with this. Kale on kale on yeah. kale. <laughs> All right, let's get started with Great. this amazing, delicious kale stem pesto. All right, so we're gonna start with this pesto. Sarah, yes. take the lead, show us how so, to So, in the bowl of a food processor, we already have kale stems that have been blanched, which just means that I've put it in some hot boiling water with salt for about a minute and then shocked it in some ice cold water. So that's gonna take away the bitterness a little bit. It's gonna cook it slightly so it's um, it's a little more tender since we are eating it raw-ish. Um, but that's the only cooking that we're gonna do these kale stems. Um, so with the pesto, we've got about a cup of the stems blanched and cut up in here. I am going to add half a cup of Parmesan cheese that has Yum. been grated. And then we've got a quarter cup of walnuts, one clove of garlic that I peeled and just quartered. And then we have, uh, this is from half a lemon, the zest of half a lemon. And then we're gonna put that all in here and we're gonna pulse it up. Can't wait to taste this. Oh my God, it smells oh, yeah. so good already. All that zest. <laughs> So you just want to pulse it until everything is broken down into small pieces and combined. And then we're going to turn it on and add the olive oil. We're adding about a quarter cup to half a cup. Getting all nice and smooth. Yeah. All right, that should do us. I'll open it up and take a look. All right, and then we want to remove it to a bowl just so we can season it up. So we'll I'm trying to help. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do the vinaigrette. Okay, sounds good. That's all. <laughs> so you can get your hands dirty. I pass you a spoon as much as much as I can do. <laughs> oh my god, this looks so delicious. Yes, and this, as I said, you can toss it in some pasta. You can spread it on a sandwich. Um, it's excellent raw. It's excellent cooked. We'll just add a couple cracks of salt. Just season it to taste. Whatever you feel like. Sounds good. And if you want to give that a little taste. Mm, yes, please. Mmm. How's that? Oh my god. <laughs> it tastes so fresh yeah. and like so flavorful, even mm -hmm. though it was just what, like four kale or five steps. ingredients? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just kale stems. Kale stems and walnuts. That's it basically. Oh my god, I want more. <laughs> yeah, get in there. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can really taste the Parmesan cheese yes. too. Yeah, that is amazing. And the lemon, I like adding a little lemon zest in there because I feel like it brightens it up a little bit and really brings all the flavors together. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put this over here. We're going to come yeah. back to this in a minute. But <laughs> now it's time for our next recipe. Yes. This, this I'm going to let you do. Okay. This is our kale stem vinaigrette. Sounds good. So in here, again, you have some kale stems that have been blanched and minced. You have about a half cup. And you're going to add half a tablespoon of whole grain mustard. Okay. All nice and seedy. Yeah. <laughs> Give you a little bit more texture, which again, textures are a funky thing for me, so the more texture, the better right now. <laughs> totally. Um, and then you've got a, a clove of garlic that's been minced. All right. And about one to two teaspoons of lemon zest. 
And what's even better about her whole Food Waste Friday thing is that we use the zest from a lemon that we're about to use. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'm so glad you pointed that out. I noticed it looks a little shady. Yeah. <laughs> we get both. We get zest and juice. Um, so you can squeeze half of that lemon into there, or I guess all of that, but it's half a lemon total. It's a lot easier to squeeze with no rind. <laughs> yes. I, a trick of mine to loosen the juice too, I always roll my citrus on a, on a table first oh. before I juice them. That loosens up all the juice. Wow, that's smart. I never thought about that. Yeah. You can also, weird, somebody told me to microwave, if you have a really hard piece of fruit, um, citrus, to put it in the microwave for 10 seconds and that really loosens it up too. Oh my God, amazing. Yeah. Love all these and tips. And then um, you're going to add about a quarter cup of olive oil. So um, whisk all that together. Whisk it together first? Yeah, whisk it together first, and then we're gonna emulsify that with some olive oil. Okay. So you're gonna have to whisk and pour. I can pour if you wanna whisk. It might be a little difficult to do both at the same time. <laughs> Sounds good. It's like rubbing your belly and patting your head. <laughs> great, so I'm gonna slowly drizzle this in. And that looks great. And then we're just gonna, I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt while you're in there. Again, just season to taste as you will. And this is a great salad dressing, you yes. mentioned, right? Yes, excellent salad dressing. Um, salad dressing, again, I mean, I, I tend to put a lot of different spreads on sandwiches and things like that too. So this would be good on that, on roasted vegetables. Great, and that looks awesome. So let's give that a taste. All right, I am so excited. <laughs> Who knew kale stems could do so much when I thought they wouldn't do anything? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is delicious. It has so really much flavor. Fresh. You yeah. only need like just a little bit on, yeah. the, on your salad too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the great thing about both of these recipes, um, you can make them ahead of time. The vinaigrette will last in your fridge for one to two weeks. You just cover it, seal it up nicely. You can use it throughout the week on different salads and things. The pesto will keep about a, the same amount of time. So make a big batch, keep it in your fridge, eat it throughout the week. Let's try it with yeah, yeah all right. let's get to dip in. So Sarah told me that both of these recipes are great dips for the kale fries. So let's give it a try. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh kale my God. On kale on kale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. And at the same time, you're getting so many nutrients still yes. because at the same time, it is still kale. Yes. You're using all these other ingredients that are all natural mm. as well. So you're getting a bunch of vitamins. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but the pesto and the vinaigrette both had a lot of similar ingredients so you don't have to break the bank buying a bunch of different things you can easily make both of them if you have a big batch of kale stems that you save and what i um i was telling brie earlier what i tend to do is save scraps i put it in a big ziploc bag or some sort of freezer proof container and save it as i'm cooking so i use kale a lot in salads and smoothies i'll strip the stems put it in a bag keep it in the freezer until i'm ready to like get up enough or store up enough kale stems to make something like this and then just go crazy <laughs> for real i just cannot believe that all three of these recipes are all made with just the base of one ingredient that we might have just thrown out yeah that's amazing you are so incredible uh, Sarah. <laughs> thank you so much for showing us thank these. you for having me of course and you can find all three recipes on brehealthy.com and definitely be sure to follow her on instagram at her lady saper but before you go since you have your little bun mm. in the oven, I just wanted to give you a little something. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Rita, that's so sweet. Oh my God. I love I'm a kiddo. kiddo. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you. Oh, thank that's you so, so sweet. sweet. Thank you She's so much for coming. For real, this has been so much <laughs> yeah. fun. And stick around because when we come back, I'm going to be showing you some eco-friendly tips that you can practice every day.